India's COVID-19 vaccine rollout continued in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's home state of Gujarat on Monday and frontline workers were first in line to receive the jabs. There are nearly 4,600 frontline workers listed with us. We are vaccinating 50% of them today. But inoculating the world's second most populous country will be costly. In its annual budget announced on Monday, the government raised overall spending on healthcare by 137% over last year to $30 billion. It's setting aside $4.8 billion to buy more vaccine doses and $9 billion for improving healthcare infrastructure over the next six years. This budget is focused on sectors which will give rapid growth in wealth and wellness. Saving lives and economic progress will go hand in hand. To encourage spending, the government has lowered some income tax rates and removed a levy on dividends. It's doling out a $2.7 billion bailout for banks straddled by bad loans so they can start lending again. And $31 billion will be spent on roads, rail and highways, generating millions of jobs. The government is also offering an olive branch to farmers, many of whom have been protesting for weeks over new farm laws. It's increasing its agricultural credit target to $225 billion over next year. That our government is fully prepared to support and facilitate the economy's reset. This budget provides every opportunity for our economy to race and capture the pace that it needs. The government's push to revive the economy is costly. Sita Raman is projecting a budget deficit of 3.8% of GDP. New Delhi has spent beyond its targets for each of the past three years and India's debt burden is set to rise even higher. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Sunil Parsakwali joins us now from Birmingham. He's a professor of international finance at the Cranfield School of Management. Welcome back to the program, Sunil. Now, let's look at the healthcare aspect first, because this budget proposes to essentially double what it's currently spending, which is about 1% on GDP, which is actually considered to be uh, one of the lowest compared with uh, other large economies. But should this investment have been made before this coronavirus pandemic, given that India is the second country with uh, the highest number of um, caseloads? Well, a couple of things to say on this. Um, first of all, that uh, India, like uh, most other countries around the world, have suffered um, because of this ongoing pandemic. Um, yes, in terms of absolute numbers, deaths look very high, but in terms of Relative numbers per million, India's death rate is pretty low. Um, in terms of whether health care should have been uh, a consideration in, in previously in previous budgets, um, it is true that uh, the health care budget of India needed a boost. Um, but if I were to pick out the most important headline for that can describe this budget uh, or this effort by the government best is that the government has sent us a message and the message is that health of the people is as important as the wealth of the economy of the nation uh, if people are healthy people are um, uh, have the uh, energy and and um, to contribute to the economy the economy will grow well so um, it is a tremendously well thought out budget as far as healthcare uh, aspects are concerned. And I think there are three key features really that as your report suggested, um, the government aims to spend uh, very large significant increases, large amounts of money on uh, infrastructure and healthcare sector. And the um, outcome of this would be in terms of greater employment and um, raising the income level of the people. And so most significant part of this budget is that government hasn't proposed um, any increase in taxation at all. And there's no wonder that the stock markets have chaired this budget with a, 
uh, 5% increase in uh, VSS since okay, national Professor, index. Professor, I'm sorry to jump in. Uh, we're just running out of time. But can I look at another significant aspect of this budget? And that's the $226 billion that the government wants to allocate uh, to farmers in the form of loans. We, we know that farmers around the country have been protesting the Modi government's so controversial agricultural reforms. Do you think this allocation will help to ease those tensions between uh, that sector and the government? Oh, most certainly. I mean, the government has also promised that they, they will ensure that the, uh, the minimum uh, selling price support for the uh, agriculture sector would be at least one and a half times of their production costs. So I think they are talking some uh, real serious numbers here. And the extended credit to agriculture sector would certainly certainly help. And so will, of course, uh, huge investments they are proposing in the uh, infrastructure, including the um, you know, energy sector. OK, Professor Sunil Porsakwali, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you again for helping us to analyse that latest budget.